Hi guys, this is Frenchie and today we need to talk. We have to talk about the hottest topic in color grading. How to make your image pop. pop, pop. Yes, pop. But we are not here to max out the saturation and the contrast. No, no, no. Because this reminds me too much the time I was wearing Vans and I was drinking Monster out of cans, you know? Only one thing changed today. Guess what? Here we are going to make the grade pop without damaging the image to make a beautiful and eye-catching result. I have four techniques I want to share to make your grade pop. I am still wearing that. So here we are in our timeline and I have few strategies when it comes to how to make my grade pop. It really depends on what you have as a shot. There are some shots that have a good potential to be poppy because of the art for example right now like i'm having a shot where i have a strong separation already between the background and my character because the background is blue and my character have a skin tone that is uh, i mean like going towards orange so then of course i already have a complementary color scheme here but here if you want like we have more meltings of colors i mean this image is a bit warm and so then we have less separation in the colors than uh, what we had here so our objective is to make these two image pop with a few strategies uh, what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna show you all my strategies here and so then you can take the strategies use them all in your note tree if you want or uh, just use some of them because sometimes like you only need one of them you know like to make your image pop so the first one that we have to talk about and that is actually the most important uh, for making a great pop is the color separation the color separation i've made a whole video about it i'm going to put you the annotation over there something like this the color separation is very important in color grading because it will help your viewer uh, to have a clarity when they are looking at your shots you have to make it easier for them to understand what is going on in the image right here uh, i'm already having a strong color separation that is happening thanks to the art and thanks to the wardrobe so if you see i'm having a wardrobe that is skin color kind of like um and uh, i'm having a color background that is around bluish so it is pretty good what i can do is that i can increase actually this color separation with color vectors because right now what i have is that i have a base of blue i have a base of pink what i can uh, recreate then is that i can take this blue and make it a bit more cyan and uh, I can take this uh, shirt and make it a tiny bit more yellowish, orange-ish uh, to have a stronger separation. So if you saw my video about color separation, we are then using the complementary color uh, scheme. And so uh, this will help to have more clarity in our footage. So for this, very simple. Uh, I'm going to go after my skin. So this is just a... a tiny look i've done you know to have a bit more clarity and not uh, start from scratch so uh, i'm gonna just create a node after my skin and in separation uh, what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna take my color wrapper i'm gonna take 16 in hue resolution and i'm gonna grab the vector of my wall over here so you can see that when i drop my mouse on the shot i can see where my blue is sitting and my blue is sitting over here and uh, i'm gonna go towards more cyany and also i'm gonna saturate a tiny bit more so then like i have a stronger separation in terms of color okay so now that i have done this i can just go to my pinkish shirt and as i doubted uh, it is the same color as my skin but what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna just try and see if i can play with it without affecting the skin too much 
yeah, I can play with it. And I can also put the skin somewhere else. And so this is actually what I created just now. So this is what we had before. And this is what we have after. So before you could see that the wool was a bit more bluish, my shirt was actually a tiny bit more pink. And now what we have now is like a tiny bit yellower shirt. Uh, I didn't move it that much, but what really changed here is the wool. The wool is very cyan and so then it creates a lot of uh, color separation. Yeah. In the video about color separation presented to you uh, the um, split toning, uh, we can do split toning here. For this, I will go to my curves. I'm going to unlink everything. I'm going to create point in red. I select red. I'm going to do a point in red over here and I'm going to just remove some red from the shadows. And so if you see, when I remove some red from the shadows, my shadows are becoming a bit more cyan -y. And what I can do here is that I can take my uh, blues. I'm going to create a point next to my um, reds. And I'm going to add uh, some blues in the highlights. So if you see before, my highlights were a tiny bit greenish. So by adding some blues, in the highlights, I compensate a tiny bit more. So this is before, this is after. So now that we've done our color separation, so after this, um, we can pass to the second strategy and the second strategy is to increase the contrast of the image, but increase the contrast in the smart way. So uh, for this, um, contrast is a more global operation. And so then I will create a node after my exposure. So for this, it's option S. So for this, I'm going to use the contrast in the HDR palette. And so then we're just going to raise the, contra the contrast to something that is natural. Uh, I kind of like around 020. I think it's nice. And uh, it gives a little punch to the image. I do it uh, on the HDR wheels just like because I want to only affect uh, the white point and the black point and I don't want to affect the colors because if, for example, I would use my contrast in my primary wheels, then my colors can be a bit denser uh, when I raise my contrast. Something that I don't really want because uh, I want to. I want my colors to stay uh, put and stay together. My advice is that if you already done your look and you don't want to affect your look, then uh, go to your HDR wheels and go to your contrast in HDR wheels. Now that we've done the contrast and uh, this contrast is giving a little more punch to our image and make it a tiny bit more pop, what we can tackle together is the density it's gonna affect only some colors density uh, over the others. I'm going to go to my color slice. And for this, uh, what I can do uh, is that I can still analyze my image and say, okay, my character uh, is in front of a wall and I would like this wall to be a tiny bit dimmer uh, for my character to pop out. Uh, what I can do then is using my color slice because I have a very strong prominent color behind her, which is a uh, cyan blue and uh, going to my blue vector and raising the density of the blue. So when I raise the density, I'm adding more darkness. And when I uh, tone down the density, I'm uh, putting more light in the color. What I can do is that I can darken my wool behind her. And so also I can go to my cyan and darken even more. And so if you see, this was before our density and this is after. So here we have a big difference because then our character is way more distinct from the background and it makes the grade eye-catching. Also something uh, that I really like to do uh, and uh, that would englobe contrast and density at the same time but in a more global way 
uh, is that we can create a node after our parallel and right click, go to composite mode and go to overlay. And so this operation of composite mode overlay will create a more natural contrast and a more natural density at the same time to uh, make your image popping out a bit more. So uh, we're not going to stay like this. We're going to go to our node key and uh, in our key output, our gain, we're going to drop it to around 15%. I think 15% is pretty nice. And so if you see, right, um, we have a nice gentle density and also a nice gentle contrast that will actually like tie the grade together. This is my third tip. So you can do tonal densities. So that means that um, your density would be only on specific vectors of colors, but also you can do some global density with a bit of contrast. So then you have a grade that comes together, but at the same time that looks a bit more poppy than what you had before. And so uh, the last strategy that I want to share with you is the light reshaping. So light reshaping is to create windows to uh, recreate light and helping the focus of your viewer uh, towards, for example, your character or something very important in the frame. For this, very simple, I created a node after my parallel node and uh, I'm going to call that vignette. We're going to do an overall vignette for this one because technically there's not a light source or something like this that we need to enhance. Uh, here, uh, we're just going to go to our windows and um, we're going to take a circle. Uh, and uh, we're just gonna uh, go around her, soften everything up. And so if you see, I only take her in my window. I'm gonna go to curves and um, I'm gonna tie everything again together. I'm gonna create a point and uh, I'm gonna raise everything. Okay, now that I have raised everything, my character is a bit more lift up and so then uh, is a bit more dissociated from the background. We're going to right click, go to add node, add outside node. So then everything outside the node is affected. And so we're going to create a point in our curve and go down. And so here then I'm just going to show you this is without the vignette. And this is with the vignette. So we have something a bit more poppy going on and uh, that is a bit more eye catching. So now that we have done all the strategies on uh, this character that was our guinea pig, uh, we're going to go to this other shot uh, that is a bit more lifestyle. I mean, this one is a bit more beauty. So it's already from the get go uh, is easy in terms of color separation and uh, in terms of um, making it pop because I mean, it was designed this way. So um, what I can do right now is that I want to create more separation in the frame. Uh, what we can do is that we can create split tone to have a more harmonious image and also to have this image be more poppy thanks to this harmony. So uh, for that, we're just gonna create the split tone after the skin. We're gonna go to our curves, go to our reds. I'm just gonna create a point and I'm gonna tone down my reds to have something a bit more cyan in the shadows. So if you see, it's uh, very nice because it's delimiting our shadows. And so then like we have way more separation going on, which is uh, great. And uh, I'm going to do the same as what I've done with the other shot. I'm just going to create a point uh, for blues. So if you want to fix it on your uh, linear curve, uh, you just press Alt and after you can slide your point. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of blue in the highlights, but really tiny to have something a tiny bit more clean, something like this. Also, uh, maybe I'm going to remove a bit of reds just to have a very nice white. It's going to really help my um, separation. So if you're a bit lost with split toning and uh, you don't really know what's going on, uh, my advice is to start first with the shadows. The shadows are actually easier to do. Uh, you just create a point in the second square of your curves and you just go down with your reds. 
most of the time uh, it will create cyan shadows when you remove some red and so you already have uh, nice shadows going on for the highlights it's a bit more complicated because you need to identify uh, what kind of colors are prominent in the highlights to either remove it or to enhance it it is for me a lot of trial and error so um, don't be too scared to explore you know on the highlight side of the split toning because it can really create a very nice result for you so uh, if you see uh, this was before our split toning and this is after our split toning so it brings the image a bit more together and uh, it creates a nicer contrast like i mean like we we have more clarity in the image uh, for us viewer to see it okay i think i don't want to increase the contrast on it because i find the contrast pretty pleasing but i'm going to increase overall the uh, density and so then i'm going to go to uh, my composite mode and i'm going to put overlay and here i'm just going to tone down the overlay to something like 15 percent same so if you see this is before and this is after we have something a bit more poppy because a bit more dense overall and uh, also a bit more contrast that is uh, reacting in a natural way for this also i'm just gonna uh, reshape some light and so i'm gonna create a vignette around her but i'm gonna follow uh, her shape instead of doing a overall vignette like this for example i'm just gonna follow her shape because I find that the light that is hitting her uh, is very pleasing so I would like to just enhance that. So what we're going to do is that we're going to link everything together, create a point and we're just going to go up so then we have a bit more highlights going on on her. And here we're just going to right click, go add a node, add outside and go down, you know. And so then it really helps our eyes you know to focus on her and have something a bit more poppy you know and uh, i think that's all i think we don't need more actually because uh, otherwise if i do more uh, it's gonna be a bit too uh, crummy i would say so i think it is good to stop here because uh, i find that i have a very nice image so i'm going to show you what we've done together so we actually done a split tone and the split tone like put uh, our shadows together and uh, made a very nice contrast going on um, after we put a vignette so we have more focus on her so i'm going to show you so this is before this is after the vignette and uh, we also put the overlay to have um, natural contrast and also a natural density overall that is going on and so this is a very simple way to make your image pop but i think with these tips you have enough variety to choose what is the best combination to have a beautiful grade but that is also respecting the footage and not damaging the image so i hope you like it guys let me know if you want a part two on how to make your grades pop because i have also uh, other ideas you know uh, to utilize otherwise it's always a pleasure to be here with you guys uh, and uh, have this superb community i see you next time guys see you